it's hard to believe that this excerpt comes so soon after that stormy opening uh, in Act One, when the music is so different. But it does, and this is the uh, first love music between Siegmund and Sieglinde. Wagner writes uh, Espressivo, and <laughs> it couldn't really be more expressive, for, especially for a, an excerpt, you know, for the double bass section. He writes these long slurs across the first three bars, and then the next three, and, you know, he, he really means the, um, the phrasings that he marks, but it's of course not possible for us to play um, the phrasing that he writes in one bow. So, for better or worse, I choose to break up the first six bars into kind of one bar per bow units. Another way um, which I've seen done and have done is to uh, break up the three bars into two bows, starting on the up bow. I'll just demonstrate that. For me personally, I find that no matter how hard I try, I tend to use a little too much bow. Um, the more I vibrate with the left hand, the more bow I want to use anyway, um, regardless of how loud I'm playing. So that's why I choose the bar per bow option. Um, then jumping forward to bar seven, um, we have these, this octave shift and there's a, a kind of mirror image of it again. Uh, later in the excerpt, you know, first of all it's two E naturals and then the next time it's two F sharps. I choose to do those on the top two strings rather than trying to cross more than two strings at once because I feel that it gives me more connection and I like to hear a certain amount of portamento um, within that. Again, I'll demonstrate. <laughs> The whole thing is within a crescendo um, and we're going to that high E flat. So I think it's completely appropriate to hear. You know, given that we start the excerpt with an espressivo marking, um, I think it's completely appropriate to make quite a large crescendo in that bar, um, you know, mezzo forte or even above for the E natural, but always get out the way. As soon as that note's done, um, we have to drop back to that kind of piano dynamic which he reiterates again after the diminuendo. And then the second half of the excerpt from figure 17 is basically the same music again um, but it's not quite and the secret is in the orchestration um, so absolutely listen to this moment uh, and get familiar with what's going on around because at figure 16 the basses are basically alone and there's a solo in the woodwinds but at 17, the texture is much fuller and the tempo tends to move slightly more. But what's really interesting is what's coming up. We have a dolce marking followed very quickly by a uh, perdendosi. And that tells us a lot. Wagner's writing um, sweetly and dying away um, within two bars of each other. And it's really important that we do those two things. <laughs> If you're wondering how to make a more dolce sound, um, then I would suggest that you have to really think about your vibrato, make sure that's nice and loose and free on whatever finger you're using, um, one, two, and four in this case, although some people use third finger in low positions. Um, and also keep the bow moving. Um, if you're not using enough bow, no matter what you're doing with the left hand, even in quieter dynamics, your sound is going to sound quite pinched. Um, so I really try my best to keep the bow moving. Uh, I'll play again from five or six bars before the end.
Now I'm nearly using slightly too much bow at times than the string can kind of manage, but that's part of the sound that I'm trying to create. It's something that's a little bit more uh, alive and, and more surfacey uh, than, than a more kind of aggressive near the bridge contact point.